Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this stable diffusion tutorial, we are going to find a very new way of creating stable diffusion images using Keras CV. A couple of weeks back, Divyam Gupta ported stable diffusion model weights from PyTorch to TensorFlow. And since then, founder of Keras, Francois Chole, has been contributing to the stable diffusion version that Divyam Gupta had put together. And now, it has been integrated with Keras CV. So all of them three have created an article. Why do you have to use stable diffusion with Keras CV? If you use stable diffusion with Keras CV, what kind of performance improvements that you get and how easy it is for you to use stable diffusion with Keras CV. And that's what this entire article is about. I found this article really interesting for a lot of reasons. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how to run stable diffusion using Keras CV. First thing. Second, we are also going to see some benchmarks. And third, we're going to see how you can improve the speed of stable diffusion using Keras CV based on two different methods. And that's what this video is going to be about. So let's get started. The first thing is you have to enable GPU runtime on your machine. So make sure that you have got GPU. You can also do NVIDIA SMI and then see what kind of GPU I've got. In this case, I've got Tesla T4 machine. And um, this entire Google Colab notebook that you are currently seeing is not created by me. It has been created by these three authors and all credits to them. So now uh, what we are going to see is we are going to first see what are the libraries that we need to install. So the main libraries that we need to install are TensorFlow and Kera CV and the rest of them are like supporting libraries. You can literally run this. Main thing is TensorFlow, Kera CV. Once you have TensorFlow and Kera CV installed, then we have to load. Time is just for benchmarking. Kera CV is where we are going to load a ten a stable diffusion from. TensorFlow from TensorFlow import Keras. And then just to display the images, we are using matplotlib plot. Once you do that, the next thing is all you have to do is keras underscore cv dot models dot stable diffusion. This literally gets you the model. You don't have to do anything else. All you have to do is specify the image width and image size. And then you have the model in place. And you can see the model weights being downloaded here. Right click and download it. You can do as well. This, this entire thing is quite transparent here. So the model is downloaded. Once the model is set up, the next thing is you need to give a prompt. And that prompt you can specify batch size. The batch size is an indicator of how many images you want. So model dot text to image and then specify the, uh, the prompt and then you can specify the batch size. Once that is ready, now all you have to do is figure out a way to display all the images. And uh, this entire set of code is just basically showing different, um, I mean, three different, three images like based on the batch size. Um, if you see based on the batch size, it is going to create three grids and then you can show the image. So all these three images, the prompt that I used is actually from the lexica.art. So if you see, this is the this is the image that I got from lexica.art. 512 by 704 guidance scale is 1 13. And then this is the prompt. So I thought, okay, let's take this and then try it using stable diffusion with uh, from Kera CV. So the images are quite, quite really good. Like I, I really like the kind of generation and I also like the way these three images are completely different. So I think this is actually pushing me towards a side where I have to always generate more than one image. But the main thing is this entire thing took about like 75 seconds, if you see. And um, and I mean, that's that that is good. Like uh, in less than one and a half minutes, you manage to generate three images using using the Kera CV method. And uh, it is on Google Colab, which is a T in, in our case, a Tesla T4 machine. So if you want to generate stable diffusion image using Keras CV, all it takes is um, this import the library. I mean, pre before that, you have to install the library. But after that, you have to import the library, load the model. Once you load the model or download the model, the next thing is you can use model.txt to image and then start creating images and you have to finally display the images. So at this point, your objective of generating images using stable diffusion is completely fulfilled. And I would say this is one of the simplest API, at least at this point, when I see to create images using stable diffusion. It's not just about the API, but the steps that is involved. It's quite simple and easy for anybody to run three lines of Python code on Google Colab Notebook and get stable diffusion images in less than one and a half minute. So that is amazing. And um, very fittingly, the author also has mentioned pretty incredible. It is indeed incredible. So um, uh, the next thing is now we need to know why do you want to use Kera CV? I mean, like there are a lot of different ways at this point you can use stable diffusion. There is um, the automatic uh, 111 um, folk. 
where uh, you have got a gradient a gradio application you can do stable diffusion there you can do stable diffusion using hugging face diffusers just purely on um, uh, on google collab or you can use gradio notebooks uh, gradio applications that are available on top of that or you can watch bunch of my tutorials and then create stable diffusion based on that so at this point you have got a lot of different ways of using stable diffusion or generating images with stable diffusion so why do you want to use or why would somebody use Keras CV? I mean, that's that's a very valid question at this point. So there are a bunch of reasons that has been um, that, um, like that. There are there are a certain set of reasons um, that have been discussed in the community before. One is when you have a model in TensorFlow, it's quite easy for you to port the model to run on TPU or run on multi GPU because that is a kind of support TensorFlow provides by default so one is that scalability advantage or the performance improvement advantage that you can get but other than that there are three um, reasons that the author has mentioned here one is graph mode execution second is xla compilation through jit compile equal true and third is support for mixed precision computation so all these three things help you in improving the time that it takes to run or generate images so this is the whole thing so all these things are going to help you in generating images much much faster than existing method so now they have also got benchmarks now the benchmark is divided into two sections one is a warm start the second one is a cold start so the cold start when it says cold start it includes the time uh, of model creation model compilation um, which may not be quite applicable in a production environment where you are going to have one model downloaded already and then you're going to use it multiple times so if you're going to just purely look from inference perspective look at the warm start but if you want to look at the overall cost or overall time runtime involved look at the cold start so let's start with the cold start if you see kera cv for cold start for tesla t4 you can see that it takes 83 seconds um, and uh, diffusers on the other hand takes just 46 seconds so if you see just purely from a cold start perspective diffusers um, has a diffusers has a much much efficient much more efficient um, runtime on the other hand also if you see on a tesla v100 machine for cold start you could see that diffusers hugging face diffusers just takes 13 seconds and uh, this one takes 76 seconds so this is this is this is the um, this th this is the benchmark for cold start. But if you see warm start on the other hand, which in this case diffusers take forty one seconds, while Kera CV takes only twenty eight seconds. It's almost like um, close to uh, like forty percent reduction if you see. And uh, on the other hand, there is not a huge improvement in terms of tesla v100 machine like on a tesla t4 machine which is predominantly what mostly people would get on google collab you could see almost like 40 to 60 for i think sorry 40 percent improvement over diffusers and that's what that's what they they are also claiming that there is sorry i said 40 percent 30 percent improvement in execution time on tesla t4 and um, everywhere else it's it's quite same and while the runtime results from running this guide may vary in our testing, the Keras CV implementation diffu of stable diffusion is significantly faster than its PyTorch counterpart and due to um, XLA compilation. So this is, I think, um, um, like with without these um, compilations. But again, now the main part is why do you want to use Keras CV is also the reason that we just discussed where you can see that these three reasons graph mode execution, which is quite common for um, um, the way you know tensorflow executes models and uh, deep learning on uh, neural networks the second thing is xla compilation through jit compile equals true and support for mixed precision computation so you can see how to do mix mixed precision computation and you can also see how to do the xla um, the xla compilation xla compilation through jit compile equals true so you can see both the both those things after you do that, um, I mean the code is available here. It's quite simple. Keras dot mixed precision dot set global policy mixed float sixteen. What it does is I think it takes the data type float sixteen, but I think it stores in float thirty two something around that, 
um, and um, and you can also see the JIT compilation. Once you do that, and then when when you run the same thing, like exact same thing, in 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 my case, very surprisingly, I got um, I got slightly more time. So in in the previous case, if you see, uh, it took seventy five seconds. In the current setup, it took ninety five seconds. I do not know was it because of the GPU if you see the GPU RAM you can see that initially it was not red so maybe when I ran the first model uh, I had more memory but subsequently when I ran more models like my memory became full so that is one of the reason why I get bad performance I don't know the reason but what the authors are claiming is that when you enable these two the XLA compilation um, it compile equals true and the mixed precision um, then you should ideally get an improvement in performance like not what I am getting but at this point you have an idea why do you want to use Keras CV based stable diffusion also if you have got a powerful GPU this entire entire discussion would be totally different so to quickly summarize there is a new kid in the town who is a stable diffusion embedded within Keras CV so Keras CV uh, is a separate python module stable diffusion has been integrated with Keras CV so in this tutorial or in this tutorial that has been put together by uh, three kind souls we have got how to use stable diffusion through Keras CV but once we saw how to use stable diffusion through Keras CV which is like just a few lines of python code very simple api the next important thing is we learned about the benchmarks for both cold start and a warm start comparing with hugging face diffusers library then we also saw a few ways to improve the performance to improve the time it takes to run the model or generate the image and then then we tried then we try to compare the scores with us their benchmarking uh, notebooks are also open source on google collab you can literally run and compare the benchmark in in this particular case at least uh, I, I didn't get the performance improvement that they said that i would get but irrespective of any of these things like one and a half second sorry one and a half minute three beautiful images of stable diffusion just in few lines of python code i'm i'm actually super impressed also if you have got an m1 mac machine or if you have got an nvidia gpu you can literally take this code and then run it on your local machine then you would be able to run stable diffusion on your local machine whether it is an nvidia gpu machine or whether it is an m1 apple silicon mac machine that is another advantage of using Keras cv where you don't have to do any change go to a different hardware like a different gpu or a different chip so overall this is i was quite impressed by this thing and that is one of the reason i wanted to make this video to share this thing with the world that you have a new way of generating stable diffusion images using Keras CV and that looks really really exciting simple easy I hope this tutorial was helpful to you uh, see you in the next video